Hi, good morning, and welcome to this screencast from Ericsson Cloud. My name is Jeff Hollingworth, the Head of Product Marketing for Ericsson Cloud, and I want to introduce to you today the concept of the industrialization cycle. And to do that, we're going to use the analogy of pets versus cattle. So there's a cycle that all industries go through, not only the technology industry, to optimize operations and to really industrialize a process. And what we're going to do to understand this is actually use the analogy of pets versus cattle. For example, if I have a pet cow, then I probably give my pet cow a name. Let's, let's call it Daisy. I keep it in my backyard and I feed it and I milk it and it produces enough milk for my family. But as we start to industrialize the concept of milk production, we start to change how we do this. And the first thing is that we're going to decide that we're going to produce milk from cows. All animals produce milk. Uh, if you see Meet the Parents, uh, the example is of cats. Uh, so goat, sheep. But we're going to decide to standardize on milk production from cows. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take Daisy and we're going to put her in a field full of other cows. So the effect of this is that we no longer have to invest in individual infrastructure to support the life of Daisy. The field has one fence. The field has common ground with common grass, with many cows sharing it. There's one trough for food. There's one food supply. There's one water supply. Uh, so here we start to combine the supporting infrastructure costs to reduce the cost there. The other item here is one of the potential of consolidation. There might be a cow that produces twice as much milk as Daisy. So maybe Daisy shouldn't exist and maybe we should have the super cow instead and less cows. So there's also the opportunity for consolidation. The third concept is one of abstraction. So if we have rather than one cow, thousands of cows, then how do we actually start to manage those cows in a uniform way? The first thing is that we stop calling them with individual names. So Daisy no longer exists. Daisy has become cow XY1238. And Daisy has certain common attributes with other cows. Or not Daisy, XY1238. Uh, XY1238 has a temperature has a motion detector, has an exercise detector. So we start to abstract the concept of a cow into what we care about from a cow point of view. And what we really mean here is that we're making the cow instrumented, but also programmable. When a bell goes off, all cows move to the milking facility so they can all automatically be milked. Which moves us on to the next phase in the cycle, automation. No human ever touches a cow anymore. The cows are managed like a herd. There are a thousand cows, they all move through the milking facility and they are all milked to produce volume uh, milk. Uh, this is possible because all cows are now programmable because of the abstraction layer. So there should no, be no cow that exists that is not programmable and readable. And then the last phase is that once you have scale production, you are no longer dealing with individual cows and you are no longer dealing with a close relationship where you can sense if Daisy is not feeling well. So you have to have governance. And there are six aspects of governance. There is performance. Are the cows producing the amount of milk that we believe the cow should produce. Scalability. Are the cows producing or the herd producing milk that meets what we can actually sell in the market? Is it producing too much, too little? Can we scale up, scale down easily? Is the quality of the milk what we expect? And are we meeting our economic targets for milk production versus cow cost, herd cost? Are we compliant to health regulations so we can prove that our milk is actually safe to sell? And the last thing is, are the cows actually secure? Is the herd secure? Can we make sure that nobody come in, can come in and say introduce a virus that could 
potentially cause damage in the milk and cause damage to the people who who receive our production. And this cycle continues to go round uh, because as we add more cows, then we get more economic improvements. There's improvements in cows. There's improvement continuously in technology. And the cycle continuously receives the best in class economic according to the business models that we're using to run our business. This is exactly the same in our technology journey at the moment. Traditionally, uh, many organizations in traditional IT have treated servers as individual cows like Daisy. They have a name. If they stop working so well, they're looked after. We swap parts out. When we start to scale exponentially and we can't afford an exponential cost in to increase, then we start to standardize on common platform. Most commonly now in the server markets, we're standardizing on x86 architecture technologies. We're putting them into common facilities with common cooling, power, uh, rack. And then we're starting to combine servers in there. And we can start to consolidate servers in many places so we can introduce the increasing utilization from maybe 10 to 20%, which is what is normal now in a traditional uh, IT facility to maybe something 60 to 80%. Never put anything in your operation anymore that is not programmable, that cannot be abstracted away, cannot be remotely controlled. Everything has a common abstraction. Everything can be treated like a herd of servers. That allows us to automate, which allows us to manage 30,000 servers per operations person versus 3,000 servers. And then once we have this massive compute network and storage, we can start to govern it. And we can start to govern it from those six aspects of performance, scalability, quality, economics, compliance, and security. And technology never stands still. Moore's law uh, has the doubling of capability every year. Different components are life cycled out. So we start again on standardizing on different components, different sub racks, different sleds, combining, abstracting, automating, governing. Continuous improvement that leads to a delivery model that maybe in two years time has you delivering exactly the same but for 90% less cost. This is the kind of economics that the public cloud providers are actually realizing today, which allows them to drop the prices seemingly with with complete abandon for profit while still running an 80% EBITDA business. Ericsson is driving this process hard. We realize that our starting point for businesses that are in operation already is not a greenfield. So we have to start introducing hyperscale technologies, but then migrate workloads from a daisy, which is a cow in a field, to cow XY1238, who is one of many cows in a 10,000 herd. We have experience of doing this managing of global predictable secure infrastructure and managing transformations of legacy and modern infrastructure. It's something we've been doing from an industrialized point of view in over 180 countries. And we understand the governance uh, requirements and the policy requirements for doing that and have presence with services in those countries. And we're experts are said at managing multiple generations of technology and the transformation from legacy to modern to have a continuous improvement cycle. We have industrialized the whole of the mobile infrastructure and now we are investing in industrializing the whole of the core network to have the same economics as that of Google. If this is interesting, please contact your local Ericsson representative and we can discuss more. Thank you very much.